All right, so we're now on part three of this series as we're discussing preparing ourselves for the crypto bull run of 2024-2025. In this discussion, I want to focus on the rules of survival in crypto. Because before a person can thrive in crypto, they have to learn to even just survive in crypto. And it's very important that this discussion is had so that we can set realistic expectations about crypto. I'm never the person to give somebody false hope about crypto. It's very difficult to be successful in cryptocurrency. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of study. It takes making some mistakes. It takes learning. Because crypto is so up and down, unpredictable, volatile, the narratives change, the trends change. It's important that a person go in with a realistic expectation. I'm not the one to tell you that it will be easy to become wealthy in crypto because it's not. I'm not the one to tell you that most people win in crypto because they don't. A majority of people lose money while it's very few that gain. It's no different than anything else in life that has a great possibility for return on investment. It's the few who win. Same as in salvation or scripture, if you want to use that example. The scripture says very few inherit eternal life. Similar to crypto, it's very few that win. So what I want to do is be able to share with you my experience of my losses and my wins and to tell you some basic rules of survival in crypto so that by listening to this, hopefully you cannot make some of the mistakes that I made whenever I was new in it. So while I can't keep you from certain pains or certain losses in crypto, what I can do is mitigate how many losses and pains you experience by just giving you these basic rules of survival in crypto. Because there are stories of people who change their life and become wealthy, but there's also stories of people who lost it all. There's stories of people who lives were ruined because they made the wrong moves in cryptocurrency. That's just the truth of the matter. And I want to put it all out there in a transparent manner so that before we even go forward with any other videos in this series, you can have this information and then make a sober, wise decision on whether crypto is for you or not. So we have to do this video about the rules of survival in crypto. So let's go ahead and start with rule number one. Rule number one is this. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Do not invest more money in crypto than you can afford to lose. Don't be betting or investing your rent money on crypto. Don't be investing money that is for your savings, for your household in crypto. Don't be betting more or investing more than you can afford to lose. So in order to know what you can afford to lose, one of the first things that you need to do is calculate your income and expenses. Cryptocurrency is not one of those things that you want to just carelessly throw money at and hope that the price goes up. Because just as the price can go up, the price can go down. So if somebody is putting in money that should go towards rent and then the price goes down, they lose that rent money. Now they're in a bad situation. If somebody wants to invest money that should have gone towards the electric bill or the water bill or funds that should have gone to taking care of the children's needs for school or food, groceries, don't be investing grocery money. Don't be investing household money into crypto. Because if you can't afford to lose it, do not invest it. So that's number one before anything. I would never be the person to tell you to take that chance and throw in your rent money, hoping that the price will go up and just throw it on some coin. Don't do that. Because in this cryptocurrency space, 
Anything can happen at any given time. Nothing is promised or guaranteed in crypto. So don't be investing money that you can't afford to lose. I don't know everybody's life situation. So for everybody, calculate your income and expenses. Calculate how much you're bringing in and calculate what your expenses are. And whatever expendable income that you got left over, that can be used for crypto. But you never want to invest more than you can afford to lose. That was one of the mistakes that I made when I was new coming into cryptocurrency. I felt that just because I had a certain amount of money in my bank account, okay, let me go ahead and throw all the money that I have in the account on crypto. And I learned extremely fast that's not the thing to do. And another reason why you shouldn't invest more than you can afford to lose is because if you're investing money that you desperately need, what will take place is once you put that money on a coin and then you start to see the price go down on that coin, you'll start to panic and you'll end up taking that money out. Let's say it was $1,500 that you put in there, but you have a bill coming up in a week or two and you need at least seven or 800 of that $1,500. So you put the 1,500 in, the price starts to go down. That 1,500 starts turning into 1,300. It turns into 1,100. Then it turns into 1,000. Now you're panicking. And what most people will do, they'll say, damn, I need that money to pay these bills. And they'll yank it out. So now they done lost almost five or $600 from the 1,500 they put in. And then they have to pay bills with that 1,000 that they took out. And now they only down to like one or $200 where they would have had much more left over if they didn't throw that whole 1500 in there. Don't do stuff like that. Because a lot of times in crypto, what happens is a coin where the price was going down, if you would have left that money in, the price could have shot right back up. Let's say same scenario, the person put in $1,500. Let's say the, the $1,500 is not money they were desperate to have. So they won't panic as much if the price goes down. So if they put that 1500 in and let's say the price drops and that 1500 turns into six or $700, they're not panicking because that was extra income that they could afford to lose. So whenever they see the price drop to six, $700, they're like, okay, well, you know, they have an option. Let me ride this out and see if the price jumps back up or they can take their money out. But if they're not desperate and that 1500 was expendable income for them and they can wait and let's say after the price drops to six, seven hundred dollars, let's say it, let's say it shoots back up. The price shoots up. The price of the coin shoots right back up. Let's say it goes to three thousand. So now that that initial fifteen hundred dollars they invested has now become three thousand dollars. And this happened because they weren't desperate for that money. So whenever they saw the price drop, they didn't start panicking and take it out because they needed it to pay a bill. They were able to wait it out. And then the price went right back up. And now that 1500 turned into 3000 or 2500 because they were able to have the patience to wait because it was money that they could afford to lose. But if that 1500 is something that somebody needs to survive and the price starts dropping, they'll panic and take it out. So people that invest money that they can't afford to lose will never really survive or thrive in crypto because they'll never be able to wait it out. They'll always be taking money out, taking money out, because as soon as the price drops, they get scared because they need that money. They never should have invested that money in the first place. Don't be one of those people. That's the mistake that I made initially when I started in crypto. So do not invest more than you can afford to lose. After you calculate your income and expenses that you need for bills, that you need for mortgage, rent, doctor bills, phone bills, insurance, all these things that are the necessities of life. Let's say you have an extra $50, $100, or for some of you out there that have higher income, maybe you have an extra $4,000, $5,000 left over, $15,000, $20,000. I don't know everybody's situation, but whatever that amount is you have left over after you calculate your income and expenses that you have 
decided is expendable income, then what you can do is start investing those amount of monies into cryptocurrency, whether it's $25, $50. Whenever I first started out in crypto, sometime I would just put $10 on a coin, $25 whatever I had as expendable income. And then later, as money grew, I was able to put a hundred, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars on coins. But that was only after money began to grow. So if you're one of these people that after you calculate your income and expenses, you find that you don't have enough left over for expendable income to invest in cryptocurrency, I would say don't mess around with cryptocurrency then. What you would need to do is figure out other streams of income in your life so you can start making more money so you'll have more money left over to invest. If you're tight right now and things is check to check, I wouldn't say investing in crypto is a good idea unless you start off small, and I mean small, like $5, $10. Don't go any higher than that if you're in a situation right now where you're living check to check because what could end up happening is that money that you put in there that you need, you could end up losing it. So start off small. Cryptocurrency can be something that you use to get uh, out of the matrix or out of the nine to five hamster wheel, but that doesn't happen automatically. First, you got to learn how to be profitable. You got to learn how to turn $5 into $10, $10 into 20. And once you get a system going and a strategy, then you'll be more confident in yourself to start betting the bigger numbers or invest in the bigger numbers like the 500, the thousand. If you can turn $50 into $100, then you can turn $1,000 into $2,000 because it's the same principle. It's doubling your money. But to begin with, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. That's the number one rule in cryptocurrency. Calculate your income and expenses, whatever expendable income that you have, start with investing that. But do not be investing your money for bills or taking money out of your savings to invest in crypto. Please don't do that, family. All right. So that's rule number one. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Rule number two in crypto is do your own research. D-Y-O-R. Do your own research. I know the other day I gave you some pages on Telegram and also on X, Twitter to follow or people that give good calls and good advice on coins to invest in. But even with that, you have to do your own research. In the scripture, they call this study to show yourself approved. So even though some of these people have good track records or giving good advice, you still have to do your own research. And on the first part of this series, I showed you some places you can go to do research on coins. You can go to Deck Screener. You can go to Coin Market Cap. Let me pull Coin Market Cap up real quick. CoinMarketCap.com. This is another site that you can go to to do research on coins. Coin Market Cap has literally ever every coin that exists. So if you're scrolling through Telegram or Twitter and somebody gives you the uh, name of a coin, all you got to do is type it in, come to coin market cap, click on it, just like I did that one right there, pull it up. It'll tell you everything that you need to know about that coin. It'll show you the website of the creators of the coin. It'll show you the social media pages of the coin, the Telegram page. It'll show you the price action of the coin over here in this section. You'll even be able to look at comments of what people have to say about the coin. So this is what you want to do. Anytime that you see somebody give a coin in Telegram or on Twitter X, you want to immediately go to coinmarketcap.com or deck screener and start learning everything you can about that coin. That's what you want to do. You want to learn everything you can about that coin. You want to do your own research. One of the most important aspects of research that you need to do in cryptocurrency is to learn all of the chains. So I'm going to put on here, know the chains. What do I mean by chains? Let's go back to uh, coinmarketcap.com and let's pull up all the chains. Okay. Let's see here. 
Let's go to chain ranking. So this right here is a list of all the chains. Every coin, every cryptocurrency coin that exists will be on one of these chains. It'll be on Ethereum, Tron, Solana, BNB, Arbitrum, Polygon, Base. This page right here is a list of all the chains. All right. The main chains that you'll deal with is Ethereum and Solana. A lot of the highest producing coins right now are on Ethereum and Solana. There's some coins on Tron. Tron is starting to blow up right now. But just remember, the chains are all listed on CoinMarketCap.com. And any coin that you want to purchase is found on one of those chains. So as you're doing your research, remember, it's important that you know the chains. The chains like Ethereum. Solana, Tron, or TRX. That's just to name a few. So you need to know the chains because whenever you look up coins, you'll find them on these chains. And like we talked about on the first day, a good tool that you can use to learn about the coins and do research is ChatGPT. Do not hesitate to go on ChatGPT to learn about coins. So let's do a little practice on that real quick. Let's pull up ChatGPT and let's just give an example how you can learn from ChatGPT. Hold on for a moment. Let's pull this up. So here's right here. It says I can ask ChatGPT anything. So let me ask about a crypto coin. Let's say uh, there's a coin, let's just say a coin called, let's just do Tron. Let's say, tell me about the cryptocurrency coin TRX Tron. All right. This is chat GPT. So this is in real time, family. So this coin named Tron, ChatGPT is telling me everything I need to know about Tron. Tron is the native cryptocurrency of the Tron blockchain platform, which aims to build a decentralized internet. Tron was founded by Justin Sun in 2017, and it has grown to become one of the more prominent blockchain projects. And it'll give you all this information about that coin. And you can do this with any coin any coin. Let's just do another one. I could say, tell me about the crypto cryptocurrency Ethereum ETH. All right. And then, boom, it'll tell you everything you, deem to, you need to know about Ethereum. And for those of you that may have an issue like using the crypto wallets, like it's difficult for you to learn how to use the wallets, you could go right to ChatGPT and you could say, tell me how to buy and swap crypto in a wallet. Okay. All right. And then it'll literally tell you how to buy cryptocurrency inside of a wallet. Like ChatGPT will tell you everything you need to know. You don't have to be reaching out to a whole bunch of folks asking them questions. You can go right to ChatGPT and do your own research. It'll tell you everything you need to know. So between ChatGPT and CoinMarketCap.com, you will be able to do your own research and learn everything you need to know before you invest in a coin. Don't just jump and invest in a coin just because you see people talking about it online and things of that nature. Because what can happen sometimes in crypto is there's people that have groups, investment groups, and all of them come together to try to make a coin pump. They call them pump and dumps or rugs. 
And what will happen is they'll pump the coin and start sending out a whole bunch of messages to people on Telegram and Twitter telling them, buy this coin, buy this coin, buy this coin. And people start putting money on the coin. The price starts going up astronomically. And once these this group of people make a certain amount of money off the coin, they'll crash the coin and take all the money out of it. They call that a rug pull or a pump and dump. So that's another reason you need to do your own research is to beware of pump and dumps, scam coins, and rug pulls. There's a lot of people out there that have lost money on these pump and dumps, scam coins, and rug pulls. That's why you should not be in a rush to jump on some coin just because people is talking about it online. Do your own research. Go on ChatGPT. Go to their website. Go to their social media. See what other people are saying who have invested in it. Take your time. Use discernment. Don't get whipped up into a frenzy and just make hasty decisions. Don't do that because there's scams in crypto. It's people out there that they do stuff like that to take advantage of new folks to scam them out of their money. And I don't want any of the people who listen to me or take my advice to get scammed. So beware of that. Again, do your own research at all times. Know the chains, know the coins, know everything that you need to know about a coin before you invest in it. Don't just jump out blindly making an investment, okay? So after step one of you not investing more than you can afford to lose, after step two of you doing your own research, the next step in crypto is to understand the game. Understand the game, meaning to have a strategy. So here's the best thing that you need to understand about the game of cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is a game of numbers. Let me type that. Crypto is a game of numbers and a game of timing. Cryptocurrency is all about numbers and all about timing. The price constantly goes up and down. And whenever you purchase a coin, you have to purchase it at a point before it goes up in price. Let's take, for instance, the coin everybody knows about, Bitcoin. Let's pull that up real quick. Bitcoin is one of the most popular coins in all of cryptocurrency. It's the number one coin. Bitcoin was created back in October of 2008. Originally, Bitcoin was only worth pennies, five, six, seven cents. And now, as you can see, Bitcoin, one Bitcoin is worth $63,119. The price constantly goes up and down. Now, imagine that. Imagine the people who purchased one Bitcoin back when it first came out in 2008, let's say when Bitcoin was worth 99 cents and you had people that bought 10 Bitcoin for 99 cents. And imagine if they held on to those 10 Bitcoins until now. So let's take 10 Bitcoin, which is $63,000. Let's say 63,000 times 10 equals $630,000. So somebody back in 2008 who purchased Bitcoin when it was only worth 99 cents and they bought 10 of them and they held it until now, held on to those 10, that investment of $10 back in 2008 would now be worth $630,000. That's what I mean, family, by how to win in crypto is all about numbers and timing. It's all about finding these coins before they blow up. It's all about finding these coins while they're still cheap, investing in them, and then watching your, your investment grow as the coin grows in, in um, worth. That's what it's about. Crypto is a game of numbers and a game of timing. That's what it's about. And the price constantly goes up and down. Just last week, Bitcoin was at like 58,000. Then it shot up to 63,000. So that's another thing you need to know about the game of crypto. It's up and down. 
And another thing you need to know about crypto is that narratives cause price movement. Narratives cause price movement. So what do I mean by that? In order for you to be a successful cryptocurrency investor, you have to be tapped into what's going on in the world because the smallest world events can cause price changes in crypto. Recently, the reason that the price went up is because the news came out that the Fed is going to be cutting rates in mid-September. So that made the markets pump. Now, way back in uh, March or April, wherever that news came out where, you know, Israel and Iran got into that little skirmish, that made the prices totally tank. You see, uh, whenever Trump survived the assassination attempt, that made the cryptocurrency markets pump. Whenever people found out Kamala Harris was going to be the uh, Democrat choice and Joe Biden stepped down, that made the markets, the markets dump. So the smallest news or narrative can cause price movement. So in order to be successful in cryptocurrency, you got to be tapped into world events. You have to know what type of news will make the market pump or the market dump. So it's very important that you be tapped into narratives and trends. One of the biggest trends right now in cryptocurrency is artificial intelligence coins, AI coins. Another thing that is popular in cryptocurrency right now is meme coins. So artificial intelligence coins and meme coins, that right there right now is one of the narratives that is blowing up. So the people who succeed in cryptocurrency, they say, boom, okay, AI and meme coins are blowing up. So let me start taking a look at some of the AI coins and meme coins that I can get paid off of. That's how that works. Once you're tapped into world events and news and narratives, you'll be able to be ahead of the pack. That's the importance of staying tapped into what's going on because it will help you understand the game and the price movements. Once again, I'm trying to keep this simple because a lot of people get overwhelmed with cryptocurrency. They look at it as being too complicated, so they get scared and they be like, man, this sounds too complicated. I don't want to do this. So I'm keeping this as simple as possible. So we don't scare people away. So you have to understand the game. And once you know the expendable income that you have to be able to spend in crypto, that's when you begin coming up with your strategy. So let's break it down like this. Let's say you have between $1 and $1,000 to invest in crypto. If all you have is $1 to $1,000 to invest, in order for you to make money, you're going to have to invest in what is called low market cap coins. These low market cap coins are the coins that are a lot cheaper. Let me break it down like this. So let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin has a market cap of $1 trillion. Ethereum has a market cap of $323 billion. These are what you call high market cap coins, which means it would be hard for you to really make a lot of money off those type of coins if all you have is, you know, one to a thousand dollars to invest. Because let's say you invest a thousand dollars in Bitcoin and the price goes up a hundred percent. Your thousand dollars only turns into two thousand dollars. Because the price of Bitcoin is so high already that you can't really make much money off of it. But let's say, let me just use another example. Uh, there's this coin called Dolan, Dolan Duck. It's a, a meme coin. And it only has a market cap of $1 million, I believe, is the market cap of Dolan. So this is Dolan right here. The market cap is $1.1 million. So this means this coin Dolan has a low market cap. It's a cheaper coin. So let's say you invested $1,000 in Dolan, right? At a $1 million market cap. And let's say the price of Dolan shot up to a $10 million market cap, meaning the price jumped up 1,000%. That $1,000 that you invested in Dolan is now worth 10,000. Whereas with Bitcoin, 
In order for your $1,000 to turn into $10,000 invested in Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin will have to shoot all the way up to like $630,000, which is not going to happen in a short amount of time. That will take years, just like it's taken years for it to go from 99 cents to $63,000. So if all you have is between one to $1,000 to invest, what you want to do is start looking for low market cap coins. You need to start looking for cheap coins. You don't need to be looking for uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. You will never make a lot of money off those coins because they're already worth so much. So look for low market cap coins if all you have is between one to $1,000 to invest. Now, for those of you out there that have between $1,000 to $10,000, you can invest what you want to start doing is looking at mid-market cap coins. Mid-market cap coins. These are some of the coins that they're not as expensive as Bitcoin or Ethereum, but they're a little bit more stable in price than some of the low-market cap coins. That's one of the downsides of the low-market cap coins is the price can go up and down so volatile. But with these mid market cap coins, they're a little bit more trustworthy. So let's go to coin market cap real quick. Let's look up some uh, mid market cap coins. Let's take, for instance, this one coin named Dion that I'm heavily invested in. Dion. It's on the Ethereum blockchain. Dion protocol. Let's check it out here. Dion protocol is what I would consider a mid market cap coin because the market cap of Dion is only $63 million. And people are saying that Dion is gonna be a billion dollar coin. So if you were to put, let's say, let's say if somebody was to put 5,000 or $10,000 in Dion, right? And then the price of Dion shot up from 61 million where it is right now to let's say 600 million. That's a 10 times increase. So if a person invested $5,000 in Dion and Dion went up to a $600 million market cap, that person would have made 50,000. Their 5,000 would turn into 50,000. You see? So with crypto, the more you invest, the more you can make if you're investing in low market cap or mid market cap coins. So keep that in mind. Um, I can't cover everything right now because I don't want to confuse people. I just want to give you a basic knowledge of how to survive in crypto. Later on, you can go to ChatGPT, you can go to Telegram, you can do your own research about low market cap coins and mid cap market cap coins. I'm not here right now to answer every question what I'm here to do right now is just give you a basic understanding of how to survive and how to come up with your strategy. Now, for those of you out there that have between $10,000 to $100,000 to invest, you can start looking at some of those large market cap coins, like the Ethereums or the Bitcoins, and you can make good money in those. Like if you invested $100,000 in Bitcoin, that's like one and a half Bitcoin. So if the price of Bitcoin doubles and goes from 60,000 to 120,000, your $100,000 investment will turn into $200,000. So the more you put in, the more you get out. That's how that works. But for those who only have one to $1,000 to invest after you calculated your income and expenses, you should only be dealing with low market cap coins. For those of you with 1,000 to 10,000, you can still do low market cap coins, but just understand those low market cap coins are volatile. If you mess around and put $10,000 in one of those low market cap coins and then the price drops 90%, your $10,000 could end up turning into like $500. I've seen it happen to people. So you just have to develop a strategy that's best for you. That's what you have to do in crypto. Develop a strategy that's best for you. Here are the top strategies in crypto. DCA, HODL, and swing trading. Okay? 
What DCA means is dollar cost average. This means that your strategy is to little by little put money in crypto. This is what I did to build myself up in crypto. I put in money little by little. Like every time I would have some money come in, let's say I had $500 come in. I would put like $75 in crypto and then put $425 towards my expenses, bills, things like that. Then when my next money came in, let's say it's $1,200, then I would put like $200 in crypto and then the rest put towards my bills, you see? So dollar cost average means that little by little, you put money in. So if there's a coin that you do some research on and you're like, man, this has potential to blow up. What you want to do is little by little put money in. And as you watch what the price is doing, you just little by little put money in. So it's like a long term strategy. So DCA is like a long term strategy for people. Hodl is where you put a lump sum of money on a coin and you just sit and wait. Just like those people that bought Bitcoin back in 2008, they put money on it and then they just sat and waited. That's called a holdle. You're holding onto a coin, hoping that the price will increase. That's a long-term game. You are looking for long-term profit. The people that do that, they really must have faith in a coin that it will, it will increase in price over time. And then you got people who swing trade. What they do, these are the people that they like, look, man, I need to make $500 today. So they're not in it for the long term or the midterm. What they're saying is, I need to find me a coin that's going to blow up today. I, I got $500. I want to put some money on a coin and then I want to see it go up like 30 or 40 percent to turn my $500 into $750. Then I'm going to take that $750, put it on another coin and let the price go up on that, turn my $750 to a thousand, then take that thousand, put it on another coin. So these are people that hop from coin to coin and just make money, then take the money out, put it on another coin, make some more money, take it out. I've literally seen people put money on a coin and only leave it in there for 30 minutes until they make some money on it, then take it right back out, put it on another coin. So these are the people that just hop from coin to coin, taking little profits. It's called swing trading. They're just in it to make some quick profit and then get up out. They're not trying to wait. They're not trying to dollar cost average. But the danger in that is you have to really be an experienced and knowledgeable trader to know which coins are going to increase. Because the only way that swing trading works is if you're putting your money on coins that are going up in price. Because I've also seen people put money on coins, then the price drops, then they take it out then put money on another coin, the price drops, then take it out. And they constantly do that until they end up with zero because they're jumping from one coin to another, not making no money on none of them. So I would not recommend swing trading to nobody until you become more knowledgeable to where you know which coins are about to go up in price and when to put money on. So you have to understand the game and you have to have a strategy. That goes back to what I was talking about, about DCA, dollar cost average, hodl or swing trade. You have to develop the strategy that's best for you. The strategy is not going to be the same for everybody. All right. And then the final thing, don't get overwhelmed, family. Don't get overwhelmed. Whenever you have some losses, don't get overwhelmed. Don't get discouraged. As long as it was not money that you couldn't afford to lose, which goes back to rule number one, whenever you lose some money or the price goes down on a coin, don't get overwhelmed. Don't panic. Be patient. That's the main thing in crypto is to be patient. And of course, pray. There's nothing wrong with that whenever it comes to cryptocurrency. Think about this. The Most High has all the knowledge in the universe. He knows which coins are about to blow up or not. So pray, ask the Most High for insight. Most High, please give me insight on what which coins are going to give me increase. Most High, please give me wisdom on what to invest in so that I don't lose money, but that I gain money. Pray, be patient. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't give up. All right? Don't be one of those people that's like, man, this is too complicated. I don't want to do this. And then you miss a life-changing opportunity. Be patient, pray, don't give up, don't get overwhelmed. 
Another thing I'll say is don't get greedy. Some of you out there, whenever you get into crypto, you're going to see some amazing profits. Don't get greedy. Because sometimes what happens is people see the money go up. They see the price going up and they're like, oh, man, I'm just going to let this ride. This may just keep going. I'm here to tell you it's not just going to keep going. Eventually, it's going to plateau and the price is going to start dropping again. So you have to make sure that you take profits. Take profits, family. Whenever you see that you're making money, take profits. If you have one of those coins, let's say you invested $2,000 and the price goes up 500%, your 2,000 has now turned into 10,000. You may want to believe that that 10,000 is just going to keep going and going and going and turn into 100,000. It might not. It might drop all the way back down to 1,000. So you better take profits. Once you see that 2,000 turn into 10,000, you better take out your initial investment of 2,000 and then just let the other 8,000 ride. Or you can take out 5,000 and let the other 5,000 ride. Make sure that you always take profits. That's why we're in this crypto game, family, to make extra income. And you can't make extra income unless you take profit. As long as that money is in your crypto wallet, it's not your money yet. It's not your money until you take it out, sell it, and then put it in your bank account or go to the ATM and cash it out. Only then is it your money. That's why it's important to take profits whenever you're making money. So just like whenever you lose the money, you shouldn't get overwhelmed and discouraged. Whenever you're making money, you shouldn't get greedy. Make sure you take your profits because we're in this to make life changing money. We're not in this to lose money. We're in this to make money. So again, family, those are the five rules of surviving in cryptocurrency. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Do your own research. Understand the game. Have a strategy and don't get overwhelmed. So I hope that this discussion has been a help. Uh, Most High Willing will come back tomorrow and we'll discuss some more ways to profit on this 2024-2025 crypto bull run.